Hello everybody, it's Kenneth from the Archives here and with another video where I'll be dipping into our collections and looking at local history. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about some photographs that are in a collection you might not expect to find them in. And the collection I'm referring to are the papers of Dr. James F. Riley. Now, Dr. Riley came to Dundee in the late 1940s to be a consultant radiotherapist at Dundee Royal Infirmary. He also was a member of staff at the university and was a very acclaimed researcher who did work of international importance on mast cells, and it was he who discovered the origin of histamine. And there's a lot of interesting stuff about his research in the collection, as you can imagine. But as I've said before, when we've been talking about university collections, there are sometimes things you expect to be there because obviously it sometimes reflects the other interests of the member of staff. And one of Dr. Riley's great interests was railways. Now, in some ways, this shouldn't be surprising. He was originally from Settle. Uh, and as you'll know, the Settle to Carlisle was a very famous railway. Uh, and indeed, some of the photographs, although not ones I'll be sh showing today, were taken down there. And he was a keen photographer, and he took a lot of photographs of railways in around Dundee railway engines in the last days of steam. And this is what we're going to be looking at today. Now, I should say before I start, it wasn't just railway photographs he took or collected. Uh, we do have some really interesting general photographs of Dundee he took as well. The one on the left shows the demolition of the Royal Arch in the 1960s, and is really one of my favourite photographs in any collection. Um, it's very sad to see the Royal Arch coming down, but it is a really great capture of a moment in time. Now on the right here, we have another view, um, probably from the 1950s, possibly even the late 40s, taken looking up Geltley Street from the Harbour Gates. Uh, we can see sackcloth being dried there, we can see lorries. So there's some very interesting photographs. But it's the railway ones I want to mainly focus on today. So these are two I particularly like. Um, there's a lot of photographs he took. I can't cover them all in one video. So on the left here, we see Wormit Station and the T Railway Bridge. Now, Wormit Station would eventually close in the 1960s. Not as a beach enclosure, as sometimes said. Dr. Beeching actually recommended that the line from Dundee through Wormit to Tayport stay open. But it was decided that as a result of the construction of the road, the Tay Road Bridge, that this line was redundant, uh, particularly as the construction severed the bit from Newport to Tayport. Uh, now that, in many ways, was really lack of forward thinking, because today that would still be a very successful commuter line, no doubt, had it still been open. But you get a nice idea of what the station looked like, and a nice idea of some of the traffic that was coming across the bridge. We've got a steam train there with a fairly long goods train. On the right is a Dundee station. It's probably Dundee's least well known of its three main stations, Dundee East. Now, Dundee East was the terminus, as I've said before, of the Dundee and Arbroath Railway, uh, and it never had a great deal of traffic. Arbroath was about as far as trains went, though some also went up to Forfar via that line uh, and on to Brecon and Kerry Muir. And this is taken towards the end of the station's life. We can see a relatively short train there. The station is not particularly busy, but again, it's a nice capture of a moment in time that has long gone. And this site today is completely gone. It's a car showroom you will find on the site of Dundee East Railway Station. Now, this is another station that photograph rather that features Dundee East, but looking from a bit further away. It's probably taken from the bridge beside the signal box at Camper Down Junction. Now, this was a major junction in Dundee. You can see a train coming out with Dundee East in the background. You can also get an idea of some of the goods traffic in the yards around. Obviously, a really big bit of railway track. On the left, you can see a line branching off to the harbour just beyond the picture. But down, you can see going down there. And that's the main East Coast Line. That is the line that is going down into the Dock Street Tunnel. So this was where the Dundee and Arbroath split uh, in two to the East Coast Main Line on the left and the trains terminating at Dundee East on the right. But look at the extent of that track work. Now today, 
very little of that apart from the main Dock Street Tunnel and one or two rusting points which have not been seen use for a long time uh, on the old Dundee East Line are there, but the rest is gone. Uh, you don't have any of this. So again, it gives you a good idea of even in the late days of the Great Age of Steam, just how extensive the railway tracks were in this part of Dundee. This is an important part of Dundee's history. This is one of the famous dock shunters that worked the quayside lines and harbour lines. So it would, they would take the traffic along the docks going between Dundee East and Dundee West and Taybridge on the surface route. Uh, obviously, because of where they were working, they had to be engines that could work on a tramway type structure and they had to be small but resilient. Uh, this particular engine is an ex-North British Railway G-Class. It was built in 1895 uh, and was, draw was finally withdrawn from service in 1959, about a year after this picture was taken. Uh, now, there's also a picture in this same series, which I don't have a copy of today, with a Class 8 diesel shunter. And I suspect what was happening here was they were getting ready to replace this particular pug, as the engines were known, with a more modern diesel. Here Riley captures a very famous visitor to Dundee. This is one of Scotland's most famous steam locomotives and unlike the others you've seen I'm glad to say that it's one that still survives to this day. It is ex Caledonian Railways number 123 built in 1886 as a special exhibition piece. It is mainly known for whole hauling special trains in its heyday on the Caledonian. Later in life, when it passed under the control of the London Midland Scottish Railway, it had been painted black and actually worked on the Dundee to Perth line. Now, this picture is taken after it had been restored. It was restored in 1958, put back into the Caledonian colours. Uh, British Rail had recognised its value and it was preserved. Uh, and after that, it did make appearances around Scotland. We know it came to Dundee in 1961, so this is probably when Riley took the photograph of it in the, the yards just beyond the station. And you can see it's a fairly impressive looking specimen. Now, it wasn't just Dundee he took pictures in, as I've said before, he did go further afield. And this one is taken a little bit further afield because it's taken up in Ballater. Now, if you are up on your railway lamps, you'll know that that particular configuration denotes that this engine is going to be pulling the Royal Train. And according to Riley's notes, this was the last engine to pull a Royal Train from Ballater because the line from Ballater to Aberdeen was closed in the 1960s. Uh, so obviously the Royal Train couldn't go along a line that no longer existed. Of course, this was the one for many years had been a busy royal line taking the royal family to Balmoral. Okay, well, I hope you found that interesting. Just a few of the pictures in a much wider collection and a very interesting collection. Uh, if you want to know more, do get in touch. But in the meantime, stay safe, take care, and we'll talk again soon.